Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this time I'm going to talk about what I'm going to be carrying on my back for six weeks as I walk through the Pyrenees from the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea. So some of my friends are aware that this trip has been planned for 12 months or more now and um, the date is finally arriving when I will be flying to Spain in order to walk along the GR11, which follows a route on the Spanish side of the Pyrenees from the Atlantic to the Med. Um, I've had a few cancelled flights and uh, it's only now that I'm pretty certain that I'm going, uh, a week before my flight is due to, to fly to uh, Madrid. Um, I wanted to be closer to Northwest Spain, but the flights that I had originally planned uh, have now been cancelled. So I'm just grateful to be getting into the country and then taking the train across to a small town called Iran. So the purpose of this video is to outline what I'm going to be carrying on my back for six weeks. And at the end of the video, uh, I'll put up on the screen what my base weight will be um, for this particular trip. So I hope you enjoy the video and uh, look forward to showing you what I'm going to be carrying. So here we are now with the rucksack completely emptied and all of the uh, items laid out on my floor. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go through all the items one by one. I won't talk about their individual weight, but at the end, as I've already outlined, I'll talk about the collective weight that I'll be carrying on my back. So let's start here on the left hand side. Um, this is my rucksack that I'll be using for the backpack through the Pyrenees. Uh, it's now my go-to backpacking rucksack. It's a, a ULA circuit. It's made in America. Um, it's wonderfully comfortable. It can carry weights well up to 40 pounds in, in weight. Um, I have no intention of going anywhere near that sort of weight, but it really is very comfortable. Uh, it's a roll top rucksack which means uh, that I have the flexibility and freedom to be able to cinch it right down when the rucksack is not that full. But when I resupply with food, I have plenty of capacity to be able to fill the rucksack if need be and uh, use the roll top to secure it down. Uh, next to my rucksack is a uh, Osprey waterproof cover. It's a relatively new addition to my backpacking set. Uh, when I was uh, on the Pennine Way last year, I did get quite wet and uh, I took the decision to bag the items inside my rucksack, which worked quite well. Um, however, the inside of the rucksack was wet. It's not a waterproof rucksack. Um, and the Osprey cover, which is very well designed, uh, gives me extra um, an extra barrier to keep water out of the rucksack and thus avoid spoiling any of those items that are inside. So moving over to my sleep system, um, my paranoia with regards to uh, my down quilt getting wet is seen here. So uh, the quilt, which I've been using for a couple of years now, uh, very, very comfortable, has two straps on it, which um, uh, attach underneath my Thermarest uh, air mat, which is there, the Neo Air. That's that black one in the middle there next to the tent. Um, so that when I roll over in the night, the, the quilt doesn't fall off me. It's really very comfortable and I'm really happy that I made the decision to move from sleeping bag to quilt because I used to get caught up in mummy bags. Um, and with the uh, quilt, you can see I've got the green uh, waterproof stuff sack. And then I've got a blue rubble bag, which I put the green stuff sack inside. So again, double barriered um, in order to ensure that my sleep system is completely dry um, should I have a particularly wet day. Next to my quilt is my tarp tent notch LI, which I am very enthusiastic about. This is a, a tent which I imported from America. It's made of Cuban fiber built by a very small company, uh, Cottage Industry. And I've just done a review on that tent. So if you are interested in my thoughts on the Notch LI, um, I'll put a link down below for you to be able to have a look at that uh, review if you are so minded to do so. Uh, moving across, uh, I've got my Ron Hill Tracksters. And next to my Ron Hill Tracksters, I've got my Rab uh, base layer. And then 
two pairs of socks, one pair of Bridgedales and another pair of socks which are just straightforward uh, cotton socks from, I think these ones are from Asda. Um, and I always wear two pairs of socks when I walk, but these socks are my dry socks. So when I get to camp, I will always have the option to be able to put uh, dry socks on to warm myself. Uh, and as the trek um, progresses, then I will wash one pair of socks, hang them from my rucksack to dry, uh, knowing that I've got a fresh pair on my feet that day. So uh, that's how I'm going to work my, uh, my socks through the, uh, the whole trip. Next to my RAB base layer, um, another favourite item of mine is uh, my down jacket made by uh, Lim. Uh, really, really very lightweight uh, down jacket, uh, but it does a wonderful job in keeping me snug when I'm in camp. Um, and I've got a red um, stuff sack to keep that dry as well. So it's inside the rucksack, inside that dry, dry bag. So. Um, Really very, very comfortable. I'll come back to the right hand side in a minute. I want to go back over to this side now. So um, just look at my cook system just here. Uh, this is a, a Lixada titanium uh, 950 gram pot. Uh, relatively new addition to my uh, equipment. Very, very lightweight. Um, very impressed with that so far actually, particularly with the lid uh, as well. I've moved away from um, a pot where I could used to drink out of the upper lid. I used to find I was burning or scalding my lips all the time. So I've gone to a collapsible mug system. And the combined weight of the mug and the Lixada um, titanium pot is still less than my previous pot that I used to carry. So uh, I've made a weight saving there. Um, next to my mug uh, is my uh, MSR Pocket Rocket. It's my go-to gas stove. I really, really like this uh, this um, stove. It's uh, very, very fast at boiling water. And next to that is uh, an adapter. I'm hoping that when I'm in Spain, I have no issues accessing uh, gas bottles which are compatible with the MSR. Um, but if I do have issues, I can always buy uh, camping gas cartridges because this adapter will enable me then to put my... Um, enable me to put my stove on top of another gas cartridge made by Camping Gas. So that's uh, something which I've acquired recently uh, and it does work rather well. Uh, behind, and just here as I'm zooming in now, this is my wind uh, windshield for my stove which clips onto the gas canister and then I've got a, a lighter and a sponge for cleaning it all out and a very small knife for cutting any vegetables or opening packets or what I need, whatever I need to use a little knife for. So that's that there. Moving across, this is my water filtration system. Um, I carry two litres of water on the front of my rucksack, um, but the knock bladder has an ability to carry an additional three litres. So I've got a maximum capacity of five litres. And this is my Sawyer squeeze uh, filter. Uh, which I find very, very good. Much far, far, far better than the mini Sawyer that I used to own. I used to get very frustrated with the slow pace of filtering with that. This is a far better system, uh, the traditional Sawyer squeeze, and um, I can filter a litre of water in a very short period of time. Moving across to clothing to keep me warm um, and, and dry indeed. Uh, that's my Rohan Helix coat there, which I wore on the Pennine Way. I was very impressed with that coat. I had toyed with the idea of bringing a frog togs coat with me on this particular trip, uh, but I have no pillow now. I've, I've made a decision to uh, get rid of my air pillow. It was losing air and I couldn't really uh, get it fixed. Uh, satisfactory, I kept losing air. And, and it, to replace it, I've been using my Rohan Helix as a pillow. It's really very comfortable. So uh, that's gonna double up um, as my waterproof coat should I need to uh, have waterproofs. Uh, I've got my Rab, my Rab beanie hat, my new Rab beanie hat, which I'm very much a fan of. Um, I have my uh, Trekmates mitts, uh, which uh, I, I, I know I could lose weight here by buying uh, lighter and smaller gloves, but I do suffer from cold hands. Uh, and so consequently, I would rather have the extra weight knowing that I've got gloves inside my rucksack, which are going to keep my hands warm when I'm trekking along so uh, that is a bit of a luxury item for me but uh, a necessary item at the same time uh, next to my helix rohan helix i've got a rab um, wind um, shirt 
Uh, I wear this quite a lot. I find it very, very useful. Uh, it keeps me very warm, actually. Um, and I often use it just as an outer layer. But there are occasions when I just use it as a, as a mid layer between uh, my coat and the base layer that I'm wearing. And that's a very, very good item to, to have. Uh, next to the Rab, um, they're not regatta great outdoor trousers, but they are indeed Berghaus Packlight trousers, um, which uh, I've just uh, using in this particular um, case um, or bag. And um, I've had them for years and years and years. Uh, I really should upgrade them at some point because they are showing signs of wear and tear, but they're going to be uh, doubling up on my trip. So if I'm cold and I need to wear extra trousers, I will be wearing my outer, my waterproof trousers instead of uh, reverting straight to tracks, which I will try and keep for camp and keeping me dry at camp. Uh, just there are my sunglasses. I've got some block sunglasses, uh, very good uh, UV protection. Moving across, um, I have my Ultrapod tripod, which I'm going to be using for uh, filming as I plan to uh, make some films as we go along through this six week trip. I've got my bum mat next to the, um, the uh, tripod. Uh, and I find this very useful, not just for sitting on when I'm having a lunch, but also when I'm at camp, uh, just outside the door of my tent, I find it very useful to be able to sit on it or stand on it. So it's uh, it really uh, become a, a necessary item. Moving to the top, I've got a Ortlieb um, map case, except it's tiny. So I use it for keeping my phone uh, waterproof should I encounter heavy rain. Spare two sets of uh, batteries, spare batteries for my Garmin, uh, my GPS 64S, uh, which is going to be used uh, in the Pyrenees for navigational purposes when I, when I think I do need to navigate. The GR11 is very well signposted, uh, but if there are any issues, I've got the whole route uh, and the maps on my GPS. So that'll be, uh, that'll be what I use to navigate. Uh, I've got my Anchor 21 watt uh, solar panel just here. Very, very good um, bit of kit I've, I've bought myself here. Um, my recent trips to um, the Dales Highway and the Stands of Stones Trail, I didn't need electricity from anywhere else. I was self-sufficient. Um, I can put this on top of my rucksack on a sunny day, plug my anchor power uh, battery pack into this, which I'll come to in a minute, um, and it'll be fully charged up by the end of the day. So uh, I find that really, really, really uh, good bit of kit. So moving to the right of that, the orange bag, this is what I call my orange electrics bag. Uh, in there, I, I have my, as I just outlined, my anchor battery pack, which is that item just there. Um, got a lead that will uh, connect that to the um, anchor, 21 watt um, solar charger, um, to then boost the anchor uh, battery pack. Um, I have a couple of plugs, unfortunately. Uh, I have to take um, the adapter to enable me to access electricity uh, when I do uh, get to a town and I have the uh, luxury of being able to uh, plug in. Uh, so I've got um, I've got an adapter plus a, a, a lighter weight plug uh, with a USB connector um, for plugging in devices. Um, I've got a couple of um, spare leads um, which uh, I've brought because I, I've had leads fail on me in the past. So I've got two USB leads for my mobile phone. Uh, in the blue pouch, I have a number of um, memory cards for backing up um, the video footage that I take on this particular trip, uh, and also uh, a spare map of France, should I decide to, uh, it's unlikely, I know, but just in case I nip into France uh, and go onto the GR10, which is on the French side of the Pyrenees, I will have a map of France as well. That's highly unlikely, but it's just a backup, just in case. Uh, in here, I've got... Uh, uh, Guy lines, spare guy line, uh, should I have an emergency on a tent and I need to uh, redo my guys, I've got spare guy line there. Okay, moving across now, I'm nearly finished. Um, toothbrush, um, no, I haven't cut the uh, handle off. That'll do me nicely. I'm not that worried about cutting handles off to save a gram here or there. Uh, first aid kit, uh, which contains uh, ibuprofen, and paracetamol, plasters, some cleansing wipes, uh, but I've also got in there my uh, nail clippers um, and some tweezers should I encounter ticks and I need to remove ticks from my body. In the grey pouch I have some uh, bog standard headphones which come with mobile phones. A plastic bag um, for uh, shopping when I do resupplies and also carrying my rubbish uh, out of the mountains uh, and when I hit a town I can just then empty that into a bin. Um, here I have my juice of Juice of spades uh, trowel for digging holes. 
uh, for number twos. And then the black thing next to it is a bidet, which is um, pushed into a bottle and uh, used for washing my behind. Um, I have no intention of taking toilet paper on this particular trip, so the bidet will be my uh, form of cleansing. I have my Nightcore head torch, which has both white and red lights, uh, which is charged from uh, the Anchor battery pack, which I have, so I haven't got uh, to carry external batteries for that one. It's got a lithium battery built in and is recharged when I need to do so. Um, next to that, I've got a Midgenet. Um, don't know what the, uh, the midges and the mosquitoes are going to be like in the Pyrenees, um, but because I'm camping, it can be absolutely miserable if you get a bad, bad swarm of them. So uh, I've got my head net to protect myself should I need to do so. Uh, I'm moving across, I've got my buff, uh, which I use primarily for uh, drying myself when I have a shower. So if I, when I do, well, as and when I do get to campsites through this particular trip, that will be my towel. Uh, but it also then doubles up to keep my neck um, out of the sun if the uh, sun is particularly strong and my tilly hat is not uh, doing well enough. And then finally moving down here, I've got a, a, a bum bag, which I shall be taking with me, uh, primarily to carry my GR11 Trail uh, Cicerone guide, uh, which has all the mapping and uh, instructions on shops, on where I can buy gas, um, and all of the useful information that I as a traveller through the Pyrenees will need on the GR11. That, that book contains everything, so uh, that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, I've got a face mask uh, in my uh, pouch and also my passport. So that is my backpack and contents therein. Um, so the total weight of everything here, excluding uh, food, which I haven't talked about at all, um, excluding water, and I haven't talked about either about sunscreen, shower gel, uh, toothpaste, uh, and hand sanitizer, which I'm also taking, because those weights are going to be um, fluctuating as and when I use the products. Um, my base weight, excluding those other items I've just mentioned, is 8.4 kilograms, which works out at 18.6 pounds. So a little bit higher than I would like it to be. Um, however, it's a weight that I've been carrying uh, recently on the Dales Highway, Stanza Stones Trail, and also on my Black Mountains backpacking trip. And I find everything very comfortable. And I've been very comfortable even when carrying the additional weight of food as well. So I can comfortably carry up to four days worth of food on top of this. Uh, and I usually estimate as an additional kilogram per day of food. So with the food, that could, could be an additional four kilograms. Um, the water would, at a kilo each, uh, at a litre each, I worked out at a kilo each. So there's another, another two, two kilograms there. So my maximum weight, maximum weight, is going to be in the region of about 14 kilograms when I'm fully loaded. And I'm comfortable carrying that with the, with the uh, ULA circuit rucksack. Now, some of the beady-eyed amongst you might notice that there is no camera listed in this particular um, base weight. And that's because for the first time ever, I am not going to take a camera on a backpacking trip. Um, this has been uh, an issue that I've wrestled with for the last couple of weeks because I'm a very, very keen photographer, but I'm also very fussy. <laughs> and um, I know I can't take an SLR because the extra weight would be very challenging. Um, I could compromise on a camera that I do have, which is called a Sony A6000, which I do like a lot. Um, but the additional weight that carrying that camera would make me have to carry is an, addi an additional 561 grams, so over half a kilogram. I've decided not to take the camera uh, and to use my phone instead to record what the eyes see. Um, I'm primarily going to be making videos this time and I always make the videos on my phone. Um, so it is a gamble. Uh, I hope I don't live to regret it, but um, it's a decision I've taken that I'm going to absorb myself in the mountains, enjoy what I'm seeing, enjoy what I'm experiencing, 
and try and capture what I'm experiencing through the medium of the mobile phone camera. Um, time will tell whether I make uh, an error of judgment with that call, uh, but that's the decision I've taken at this time. So there we are, guys. That's my, uh, that is my base weight for the forthcoming GR11 trip through the Pyrenees from the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean. Um, as ever, thank you for watching the video. And if you have any questions, please post them uh, in the comments below and I will answer them for you. Uh, it's possible that by the time you see this video, I will already be in Spain. So please bear with me if my responses are rather delayed. But thank you for watching and I hope this has been of some use for you. All the best.